The world of banking is falling apart. The big question is why? After all, we use banks to keep our money safe, don't we? So how can it be that banks actually have the ability to lose our money? The answer is because the banking system has changed a lot since it began back in 1913 when the fractional reserve banking system was actually created and started to be used for the first time in the United States. In this video, I'm going to discuss exciting topics like money policy, fractional reserve banking, and sound banking, or what I would call infinite banking. Now, if you're a nerd like me and you're obsessed with learning about personal finance and all the things you need to do to get ahead, make sure you tap that subscribe button and while you're at it, make sure you hit the bell. That way you're notified every time I launch a new video. Let's go. What's going on, cash flow hackers? It's Chris with Life 180 and today we're talking about the exciting world of banking. Yes, I said it. Banking is exciting and no, it shouldn't be exciting, but it certainly is here in 2023. Banking is supposed to be boring, right? It's supposed to be a boring place that you can store your money for piddly returns and keep it safe. But no, not in 2023. So far this year, we've already seen five banks fail, which people like Jamie Dimon are saying there could be up to 180 banks that fail in 2023 alone. We're just seeing the tip of the iceberg so far. The surface is a giant problem and the banking system is riding the Titanic of an economy right at it at this point in time. We've already seen three huge bank failures with SVB, Signature, and First Republic Bank failing this year so far alone. How can this be? Well, the answer is it's a combination of different elements that lead to these banks failing. So let me cover what some of these elements may be. First and foremost, banks don't have reserves. As of 2020, banks are not required to keep reserves on hand. So let me explain how this works. I'm not sure if you know this or not, but as soon as you deposit your money into a bank, it's no longer your money. The bank then takes that money and lends it out so they can make a profit. To make it worse, they can lend up to 100% of your money. Now that sounds like a pretty good deal for the bank and a pretty bad deal for you and me, not to mention a really risky one. And this is what fractional reserve banking is all about. Now the second element leading to bank failure is the fact that banks have made poor investments. As interest rate markets have changed and the rates have gone higher and higher, banks have become more and more at risk because they have the assets on the books that they've lent money out are at lower interest rates uh, and, and the, the money that they're earning on the bonds and the interest rates are at lower rates than the new money that they're having to buy or that they're having to pay out is more expensive. This is actually causing a big problem for the banks. Now, the third element that comes into play here is the fact that there's been a contraction in actual banking deposits. You see, it's kind of house of cards because once people see the risk, people start stop trusting the system. And once people stop trusting the system, then they stop depositing money into said system. So here's the problem with this. If there is no new money coming into the banks, they can't afford to make payments on the, uh, on the deposits the rest of their clients at the bank have made because they've lent all that money out. Remember that part about needing any, not needing any reserves? This is what I'm talking about. That's exactly what sunk the First Republic Bank. They stated that the greatest stressor and cause that their bank failure was caused by was due to the fact that a hundred billion dollar reduction in quarter one deposits forced them and kind of caused them to become insolvent. Wait, wait, wait. Did Bernie Madoff come back from the dead and start running banks again? Doesn't it sound like the fractional reserve banking system is a bit of a Ponzi scheme? Heck, isn't that the exact definition of a Ponzi scheme? If a bank requires new deposits to stay solvent, that's exactly what it is, a Ponzi scheme. And don't give me this garbage about them not knowing interest rates were gonna go up. We've been in the lowest interest rate environment for a decade now. They had to know that rates were gonna go up at some time. This is just greed, plain and simple. They had to know that we're exposed, but at the end of the day, they don't care because the FDIC will bail them out and banking executives will make millions of dollars in bonuses along the way. But who's gonna pay for it? You are. Why you? Because the FDIC is backed by tax dollars and it's really disgusting when you think about it. Yet somehow people keep playing ball with the bankers and putting their money in the banking system. Do you have any idea how much money these bankers are making off your money? Well, to figure this out, let's just think about the way the average American handles their money. You go to work, you earn your $50,000 or more per year, uh, you have it, you auto deposit your money uh, or your check into your bank account. Every time you do that, the bank lending capacity goes up because more money goes in. You give them $1,000 of your weekly check and they're able to lend that out as part of a car loan at 8%. 
And what do they pay you? They give you anywhere between a tenth of a percent and 1%. So what does that mean? That means they're making anywhere from 800% to 8,000% on the money that you deposit with them. The crazy part is you do it willingly and it gets worse from there. If you're the average American household, you have a mortgage, you have a couple car payments, you have a couple credit cards, and the average American household right now is spending too much of their income on interest every single year. According to consumerfinance.gov, Americans spent $120 billion on credit card interest payments alone in 2020. To make that worse, total credit card debt has gone up by nearly 50% since that time. This isn't a good picture. Now, did you know that when you get a 30-year mortgage at 7% interest rate on a $400,000 home, you're actually paying $557,960 in interest on that mortgage? That's 40% more in interest alone, just the interest you pay on that house than the, than the actual price of the house. Now, don't get me wrong, there have been times like recently where getting a mortgage was so cheap that it actually made sense. The crazy part is that it was so good and the rates were so low and it was so beneficial to have a mortgage for you and for me that it actually may be the exact thing that helps bring the banks down and make them fail. I think most people participate in this banking system because really it's all they know. They don't know another way. People are not educated about how banking actually works or how money actually works. At the end of the day, this is all a control game of misdirection. They get you to give them control of your money so they can make ungodly returns with no risk while they convince you to put your money in the stock market and risk everything for 8% returns if you're lucky. Neo, there seems to be a glitch in the matrix here. This is why I'm so passionate about infinite banking. Okay, so maybe this is your first time here and you're thinking, what the heck is infinite banking? Well, there's a lot to it and I have a ton of videos that go into a lot of depth about what infinite banking is. But for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna say that it's a properly designed whole life insurance policy designed to be a safe place to store your money instead of a bank. Now you may be thinking, why the heck would I wanna save money in a whole life policy and use that as a banking alternative? It's whole life insurance, it's life insurance. Well, I'm gonna give you one solid reason. While five banks have already failed in 2023 alone, only one participating mutually held life insurance company has failed since 1842. Yes, you heard that correctly. I said 1842, that's 181 years. Through the Civil War, Great Depression, World Wars, Cold War, dot-com bubble, Great Recession, all of them, only one bank failure. Now, how can that be? Because while banking isn't what life insurance companies do, the rules that apply to mutually held whole life insurance companies, not IUL companies, force the, the insurance company to handle your money in a way that you probably thought the bank was required to handle your money in the first place. Here's the only challenge to using a whole life insurance policy as your banking alternative, is that it has to be designed properly. And sadly, there are not a lot of agents out there that know how to do this. I'd say roughly about 95% of the agents, probably actually more than 95% of the agents in this country, don't know how to set your policy up to do this. That said, if you work with an agent that knows how to design a policy and can coach you through the life of your policy, you'll see how your policy will outperform your bank over time. You'll have just as good a liquidity of your money and you'll receive other benefits to go along with it. Benefits like tax-free life insurance, right? Like it's a big thing that's one of the main benefits of it being a whole life insurance policy. Potential access to tax-free income using the cash value in your whole life policy. You're gonna have living benefits in your whole life policy. If you become critically or terminally ill, you can utilize that money for your medical directive or to help you supplement for disability or long-term care insurance. And most importantly, it's gonna give you the ability to take back the banking function in your life. Now you're probably thinking, take back the what? What is this guy even talking about? Well, remember all that money that I was just talking about and showing you that the bank was making that 800 to 800, 8,000% uh, returns on your deposits with no risk. What if I showed you there was a way that you could build your own financial system that slowly allowed you to take control of that, pay the bank less and recapture that interest to achieve your goals and objectives, not pad the wallets of some banking executive as they get a parachute landing when their bank fails. That is what this is about if you do it right. 
And if you want to learn how to do this or what it might look like in your life, there are a couple things that you can do. First, set up a call with one of the coaches on my team. They can help you answer any questions that you have and show you what this might look like in your specific personal financial situation. Second, keep the education going. Subscribe to the channel, of course, but also check out the Infinite Banking playlist on the end screen and the Infinite Banking Simplified video to get more of an in-depth overview of what this could look like for you if this is your first time checking this out. Until next time, have a blessed and inspirational day. We'll talk soon.